In this video, I'm going to look at two more relative mass definitions, and that is relative molecular mass and relative formula mass. Essentially, they are very, very similar, but hopefully by the end of the video, you will appreciate the difference between the two terms. And you can see in the terms, the only difference between the two is this, these middle words. So we've got molecular and formula. So we'll start with relative molecular mass, or MR for short. And obviously the key to this is we need to know what a molecule is. So there's the definition of a molecule, a group of two or more atoms held together by covalent bonds. So I've got some examples of molecules I'll put on the whiteboard now. So here's the first one, and that's a molecule of hydrogen, H2. There's another one. That's a molecule of nitrogen, so that's N2. Slightly bigger molecule with three atoms in the molecule, that's H2O. Water, obviously. Another molecule with three atoms, we've got this one. That's carbon dioxide, CO2. That's a model of a propane molecule, and its formula is C3H8, so that's got 11 atoms in it. And the final model I've got is a model of a glucose molecule. The formula of glucose is C6H12O6, and that's got 24 atoms in the molecule. It's still a molecule because the Atoms are held by covalent bonds. So the relative molecular mass is all about the total mass, if you like, of this molecule. So I'm holding the water molecule there. What's going to be the overall mass of this? Well, what's it made from? It's made from an oxygen and those two hydrogens. Well, the relative atomic mass of oxygen is 16. Hydrogen, one each. So the relative molecular mass of this is 18. And we'll go to the biggest one, the glucose molecule. What's that made from? What's its relative molecular mass? Well, it's made from six carbons, 12 hydrogens, and six oxygens. So if you add all that together, you get a relative molecular mass of 180. So the next thing we need to talk about are ionic substances. So I've got a model here of a sodium chloride ionic lattice. And what we need to appreciate is this is not a molecule. Yes, it's a group of more than two atoms. Yes, they're held together by bonds. But these aren't covalent bonds anymore. These are ionic bonds. So because this isn't a molecule, we can't call the mass of this the relative molecular mass. So we need this other term, the relative formula mass. We'll stick with sodium chloride to make this point. So for sodium chloride, we could have millions, billions, trillions, quadrillions, not sure what the next term is, but we could have different numbers of particles present. And that's basically because this crystal could be grown to whatever size you wanted. Whereas with molecules, they have an absolute fixed number of atoms in the molecule. So if we think about the H2O molecule, there are three atoms in that molecule. That's it. It doesn't ever change. So, in other words, the formula of sodium chloride, if there were a million sodium ions and a million chloride ions, it would be Na 10 to the 6, Cl 10 to the 6. If it was grown to a bigger size and we had a billion of each ion present, the formula would then be Na times 10 to the 9, Cl times 10 to the 9. That would give that crystal of sodium chloride an MR of... 
five eight five one two three four five six seven eight eight zeros after but we can't do that can we now hopefully you'll have noticed in the two examples I gave the millions and billions form the ratio between the two ions was the same the ratio was one to one so instead of writing Na times 10 to the 9 Cl times 10 to the 9 or Na times 10 to the 6 Cl times 10 to the 6 because of the 1 to 1 ratio of the particles, the ions it's just NaCl for every sodium ion there's a chloride ion and that's what we call the formula unit so the formula that you write down the sodium chloride, the NaCl is the formula unit. So it's the simple ratio between the particles. So time for the definitions now. The relative molecular mass or MR is defined as the weighted mean mass of a molecule compared to 1 12th of the mass of an atom of carbon 12. Why weighted mean? Well, obviously, molecules are made from atoms, and atoms exist as isotopes. Atoms of an element don't all have the same mass, so the mass of the atom is the weighted mean mass. And so if these atoms make up molecules, you've got to use weighted mean mass again. Relative formula mass. Again, MR is the symbol. And that's the weighted mean mass of a formula unit compared to 1 12th of the mass of an atom of carbon 12. So I'll just finish with this to explain the benefit of the relative formula mass term. Relative formula mass can actually be used for both types of substances that we've looked at in the video. So water, remember, is a molecule, it's covalently bonded atoms, it's a molecule, so we would have to use um, relative molecular mass, so if I just put the abbreviation there, RMM, but remember we use MR now, the relative molecular mass of that is 18.0, but you are allowed to use the RFM, you, you could say the relative formula mass of water is 18.0 and that's because water has this formula H2O and we can give that a mass so we'll look at an ionic substance now I've chosen lithium chloride so remember this is an ionic substance it's got a giant ionic lattice with millions billions of ions present but the formula unit has this nice simple formula LiCl so its relative formula mass is the mass of these two ions added together, which is 42.4. If you said the relative molecular mass of lithium chloride was 42.4, you're actually saying something that's wrong. What's wrong about that? Lithium chloride is not a molecule. So you can't use RMM.